I am super excited to tell you guys about this lens right here. I've been using the EF 50mm lens for about five years now, and I've used it through numerous different cameras. Even on my Panasonic GH4, I got an adapter and I used the 50mm and I really stuck by it because it gives you some great results. If you're thinking about buying any sort of 50mm, go for it because the focal length is just super great. If you're shooting products, if you're shooting people, or even landscapes, if you want it punched in a little bit, a 50 mil can be so great. And the low light capabilities are just phenomenal because you're getting an f1.8 aperture. And honestly, just for the price, I mean, you could easily pick this up, throw it in your camera bag, and it's gonna come in handy at some point. Even if you don't think you'll use it, trust me guys, you'll use it. So yeah, this price is in at $220, 200 pounds. It is more pricey than the standard EF version. However, I had that for a long time and I can tell you the build quality is much, much better on this. Honestly, if we were just to, to put this on a scale of 10, the L lens that Canon make is 10 out of 10. This, I would say, would probably be a 5 out of 10. And the EF version of this would probably be, I would say, a 2 out of 10. So just to give you some rough idea, it's much better build quality. It feels more solid. It isn't rattly like my EF uh, lens was. That actually had kind of a weird rattly sound. And... Um, yeah, the plastic's just more robust, it feels more durable, and something really great is you're actually getting a metal mount. So it isn't weather sealed or anything, but having a metal mount is so much nicer. It's just gonna handle better over time, and overall it's just a much more quality piece of kit than the EF lens. But something about the RF lens is you now have a control ring, so it's not actually physically connected up to the lens, it's programmable. So you can go ahead and toggle the switch between focus and control, Focus obviously allows you to manually focus. However, you do have to go and toggle it in your camera settings, which is a hassle. There's no physical switch for that. But if you keep it in control, you can program this ring to do numerous things. You can make it change your white balance, your aperture, your shutter speed. You can do a lot of things. And honestly, I find it quite useful. So yeah, you have that, the control ring. It's pretty nice. It's very smooth turning this. This lens just feels much, much better than the EF lens. Um, but yeah, I never really use the control ring too much. I find it easier just to change all my settings on the camera. So take these things into account. They might not be that useful as they seem. Sometimes like the hype and the excitement of getting something, it makes you think you'll use something. But once you get it, trust me, you, you never really do. But yeah, back to the point, F1.8, you're getting a super wide aperture. You're getting lots of light in. So this is great in your low light scenarios. You're gonna get a lot of background blur. So that nice bokeh bokeh, bokeh, whatever you want to call it, you're going to get that nice sort of depth behind the thing you're shooting. And this is really great because it gives you as a photographer the ability to actually focus specifically on what you want your viewer to look at. So that's really nice. You're just getting overall a better separation between that foreground and background. If you're going for that, honestly, I love it. I mean, even shooting videos like products on my desk. If I'm actually filming something, having that background blur is so handy because I want people to look at the product and not everything else on my desk. So I find that really handy. If you're curious about the video capabilities, this doesn't have image stabilization built in. However, if you are using it on like a Canon R5 or an R6, you've got five axis stabilization in body. So it's not much of a big deal not having it in the lens. Obviously, if you're taking pictures and you're using a camera that doesn't have IBIS or you're taking videos, then you may want to consider whether you want to spend a lot more money than this because you're going to get shaky results if you don't have any stabilization. Something really nice is it is obviously cropped in, so you're not going to get that wobble effect on the IBIS, which is a nightmare. But honestly, I really love the size of this. It's 160 grams. It doesn't really look that professional if you're going around and about taking pictures of this because you know, everyone everyone knows that professionals have a massive lens on the camera, obviously. So uh, yeah, we're rocking around with this. You're, you're gonna look a little bit lame, but it does produce great results. There's such little distortion on this lens. It's incredible. And you do get a little bit of vignetting sort of on the corners. I don't personally mind it too much. You can kind of fix it in Lightroom, but I kind of like vignetting, honestly. Some pictures I take, it just kind of, it, it's nice. I normally add vignetting anyway, so it's only subtle. If you don't like that, then yeah, it's gonna be a little bit of a problem. I don't personally find it an issue. Something you may be curious about 
is how sharp this is when it's completely open at f1.8. And I can say you're definitely gonna get softer corners than on other lenses because you've, you're wide open. I mean, everything in the middle is gonna be pretty crisp at all times. But yeah, those corners do tend to be a little bit soft. Once you go above f2.8, it does get better and more usable. And then once you go over f4, you're gonna get pretty good results. Everything's gonna be pretty much crystal clear. Personally for me, I don't really mind the soft corners because I shoot a lot of products on my desk. I have things in the middle of the frame. As long as that's crispy and I've got my nice depth of field. Yeah, I think this lens is great for solely that purpose. Just if you're shooting products or you're shooting people and you're not really that bothered about the corners, it really does produce great results. And I guarantee you that any photographer or person in general would think that lens costs a lot more than it does for the actual results. So take that into account. You're gonna get pretty good results for the price. People may think, oh, it's it's still kind of expensive for just this cheap shady lens, but once you get it, you will never give up the Nifty 50. In terms of autofocus, it's a little bit slow at times. It does kind of breathe a little bit when it's focusing. The motor on it is also kind of a little bit loud as well when it's kind of breathing and, and focusing. So if you're recording audio, then yeah, you might actually hear the motor in the footage, but I use it for B-roll and I put music over the top or I'm talking, so I never really have the audio from that B-roll segment. But yeah, that's honestly all I have to say. If you're looking for some more videos from me about this lens, let me know down below. I'd be happy to make some street photography videos or just any sort of video involving this lens. I'll definitely be including a lot more in my future videos anyway. But yeah, if you're looking for a great B-roll lens, if you're looking for a lens to get that separation with the nice bokeh, then yeah, Nifty 50 is where it's at. You guys just need to pick one up. Try it for yourself. But yeah, have a nice day. I will see you later. Peace.